الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاه والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ولا تكلنا الى انفسنا طرفه عين ما بعد so we continue reading the treatise of the great Imam, Al Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. The short trees, it is short in its, con- in its content, or co- context, its wording, but it is, it is great in its meaning and benefit. Al Usul as Sitta. Al Usul as Sitta. The six principles. The six principles. In our previous class, we have discussed some of the issues with regards to Al Asl Al Awwal. Al Asl Al Awwal. Who can remind us of the first principle? Al Ikhlas. Naam, Al Ikhlas. Ikhlas with Dini Lilahi Ta'ala. Wahdahu la sharika la. And? Mm. And the clarification of the opposite of that Which is to associate partners with Allah in worship So the first fundamental principle that the author mentioned It is the fundamental of all fundamentals Or the foundation of all foundations The foundation of all fundamentals It is the base of the deen It is what the deen is based upon And if anyone has any other deed in this religion, whether it's speech or statement, without this first fundamental principle, then nothing will be accepted from him. Allah lillahi dinul khalis. Verily, the religion is purely and sincerely entirely for Allah Azza wa Jal. The author, likewise, he mentioned, and this is where we left off in our discussion, وَكَوْنُوا أَكْثَرُ الْقُرْآنِ وَكَوْنُوا أَكْثَرِ الْقُرْآنِ فِي بَيَانِ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ مِنْ وُجُوهٍ شَتَّى and the reality that the majority of the Qur'an is in the clarification of this principle for many aspects. Who can remind us of some of the benefits with regards to this portion of the text? He says, the author, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, that the majority of the Qur'an is in the clarification of this principle for many aspects. Rather, uh, Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned that the entire Qur'an is in the clarification of Tawheed. The entire Qur'an, from Al-Fatiha to An-Nas. He mentioned every single verse is containing Tawheed and is calling to Tawheed and is a testification to Tawheed. Every single verse in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Who can remember how this will be? He mentioned because the Qur'an, the verses of Allah Azza wa Jal, the ayat, they're discussing His names and attributes, Ahsant, Allah Yubarak Feek. The names and attributes, the clarification of who Allah is, this is directly Tawheed. The Tawheed of Allah by, by learning His names and His attributes and His power and His might and His knowledge, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And His complete perfection and no need of anything, as samad Al-Ahad, Tabaraka Wa Ta'ala. He's teaching us about these things. In his book, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, talking about his actions. Likewise, the Qur'an is about hmm. his, commands and his commands and prohibitions. There was a good point that, she, that Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned with regards to this, the commandments and prohibitions. That these are from, how are this related to Tawheed? Yani the relation of the commandments and the prohibitions to Tawheed. These are from the rights of Tawheed. And this is that which completes the Tawheed. That the one who falls short in the commandments or he perpetrates or commits some of the prohibitions, this is because of a deficiency in his tawheed. This is because of a, of a deficiency in the tawheed and the ikhlas and the islam and the iman. Because complying to the commandments and leaving off the prohibitions, this is from the rights of tawheed. And this is from that which complete will complete and perfect a person's tawheed. Ahsan. Likewise, the Quran speaks and discusses other issues like 
the reward of those who do good, and the outcome, which is done, the jaza, jaza at tawheed, the recompense of tawheed. Also the punishment of those who oppose tawheed. Naam, and this is the recompense for those who oppose tawheed. So in every aspect, or in, on all these different aspects, the Quran is clarifying tawheed, the reality of tawheed. Even the surah uh, Al-Masad is about tawheed. It's a clarification of what happens to those who oppose tawheed. And their outcome and their destination and that they, they will have humiliation in this life and in the hereafter. Every verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clarifying this issue, calling to this issue. Al-Ikhlas, Ikhlas Udini Lillahi Ta'ala Wahdahu La Sharika La. This is what the author mentioned. And then likewise there are some other aspects from pondering over the Qur'an we've seen that in other aspects, likewise, we can see that the Qur'an is calling to Tawheed and it's all about Tawheed from every aspect. Huh? And the, the, Qur'an, the Qur'an is supposed to be, supposed to be listened to by, by ears, not, not so most important by heart, so you can benefit, benefit this, this, this pleasure and uh, you can stay away from these prohibitions. So you can, so you can by, by, by hearing, by hearing like what is, pro, is prohibited, Ahsant. Sahih. We ponder over the Qur'an and we listen attentively. And then we hear the Tawheed and it sinks in our hearts and we benefit. Naam. Sahih. Jazakallah khayra. This was in the class in the other book. <laughs> uh, the benefits from Al-Imam Al-Azurri. Naam. Ahsant. But it's a beautiful benefit. Jazakallah khayra. Jazakallah khayra. Naam. Uh, who can remind us? If we open the Qur'an from the first page, we start reading, searching, searching for the first Commandment. What is the first commandment? The commandment for? Tawheed. What is the first prohibition? We begin in Fatiha, we start reading. What is the first thing Allah commanded? What is the first thing Allah prohibited? The first thing He commanded is to worship Him alone with no partners. The command was not to the Muslims, it was not to the believers, it was not to the people of the book, it was not to the disbelievers. Who was it to? All mankind. Ya yuhannas. Urabudu rabbakum. Who was the Rabb? The one who created you. This is another manner how Allah Azza wa Jal, He emphasizes and He uses as a proof for His tawheed. To worship your Lord. Who, the, who is the one who deserves worship? Your Lord. Why? Because He created you. Because He created you. The one who created you, that's the one that's worthy of worship. The one who created the sun, that's the one that's worthy of worship. The one who sends the rain from the sky and brings out the fruits and the vegetables by way of that rain for you, that's the one that's worthy of worship. Allah Azza wa Jalla, many different aspects. And then likewise, some of the ulama, they mentioned like the first verb in the Qur'an was the verb of Ya'budu, Na'budu, Abada, Ya'budu, Ur'bud, Ibadatan. Iyaka, Na'budu. So from many different aspects, we see that the Qur'an is calling to Tawheed, it's clarifying to Tawheed. It is uh, uh, testifying to the right of Tawheed and the obligation of Tawheed. So how can they go astray? How can people be misguided? How can someone prostrate to a stone? How can someone call on someone in the grave? Hmm, the answer goes back to the muqaddima. No uh, guidance from Allah. This is the indication of the power of the Malik al-Ghallab. That it can be this clear. But these people will still not be guided unless Allah wills. Unless Allah, unless Allah wills. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned in every khutbah, whoever Allah guides, then none can lead him astray. وَمَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ Whoever Allah guides, then no one can lead him astray. And whoever Allah has left to in misguidance, then no one can guide him. So this is the case. Even if it's that clear, this is an indication of the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that nothing happens in this kingdom except with His will and His, uh, his permission. Subhanahu Wa ta'ala. Now, so we continue reading from the text. We're still reading the uh, Al-Asl, Al-Awwal. And the next portion, the author, he mentioned, and he's mentioning uh, the reality. After this clarification has come in the book and in the Sunnah, he said, ثُمَّ لَمَّ صَارَ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِ الْأُمَّةِ مَا صَارَ أَظْهَرَ لَهُمْ الشَّيْطَانُ الْإِخْلَاصَ فِي سُورَةِ تَنَقُسِ الصَّارِحِينَ وَالتَّقْسِيلِ فِي حُقُوكِهِمْ وَأَظْهَرَ لَهُمُ الشِّرْكَ بِاللَّهِ فِي سُورَةِ مَحَبَةِ الصَّالِحِينَ 
He mentioned Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he said, and then what happened to the majority of the Ummah, or then when what happened to the majority of the Ummah happened, Shaytan portrayed sincerity, ikhlas, and worship to them in the form of finding fault with the righteous people and neglecting their rights. And he portrayed associating partners with Allah in worship as loving the righteous people and following them. As loving the righteous people and following them. The author he is mentioning, and he says, وَلَمَّا صَارَ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِ الْأُمَّةِ مَا صَارَ And what occurred to the majority of the ummah happened whenever this happened? What happened? And after the, the death of the Prophet wasallam, Islam began spreading. Islam began spreading, conquering nations. The Muslims conquered nations. The companions, radiallahu anhum, they conquered nations to the east and to the west. They conquered nations to the east and to the west. And many people entered into Islam. Many, many people entered into Islam willfully. And Islam spread. But there are some from the enemies of Islam who entered into Islam also, but not willfully. Whether they entered uh, because they wanted to corrupt Islam. And they wanted to maintain some some worldly benefit, and then they had plots to corrupt Islam. They knew that they could not fight, and they could not defeat Islam outwardly, and they could not defeat the Muslims outwardly. They were strong. Whenever they were obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and following His religion, and following His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they were upright, Allah gave them victory. The enemies of Islam, they, they knew they could not destroy the Muslims from outside. So they tried to destroy Islam from inside by corrupting the creed of the Muslims, by corrupting the creed of the Muslims. So whenever Islam spread to the lands of the non-Arab, and uh, many of them, they entered in Islam and he, because of this reason. They were, and even some of them, they entered into Islam, but they brought along with them some of their, of their ideologies, and they would mix the truth, truth with the falsehood like this. So this is one of the things that happened. He's talking here. So whenever what happened to the majority of the ummah happened, and likewise another issue that happened is ignorance began spreading. Al jahl bil munazzal, ignorance with the revelation, ignorance with regards to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, ignorance with regards to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, ignorance with regards to what the companions were upon, the tabi'een were upon. The people, uh, the Muslims began diving in the dunya, and the dunya became widespread for them and, and very and very vast for them, and it was given to them, and uh, and the likes like this. So this is another means. Whenever ignorance spread, and the people of the Sunnah, some of them or died off, or the ulama, and the knowledge is getting less, and then there's more people of ignorance, and then at this time, Shaitan he's able to introduce his plots, and he's able to introduce his division. And the likes like this. So, Masara he's talking about whenever ignorance became widespread. And likewise, uh, one of the reasons that led to the situation that we see, likewise, is having an gulu fi sarihin. And going uh, to extremes with regards to the pious and the righteous people. So, these are three uh, major reasons that caused any you know, this deficiency in, in, in the ummah. The fact that. The, the people tried to corrupt from inside and then likewise the, the non-Arabs introduced these different religions from paganism and the likes like this and these different philosophies translated to the Arabic language and introduced into the deen and the likes like this bringing different ideologies and different creeds and different beliefs and some, some people trying to make the Muslims have doubt about their deen and the likes like this and deviation began spreading from this aspect and then ignorance became widespread amongst the people and then likewise, there was huh, extremism with regards to love for the righteous. All of these reasons like this were a means for shaitan to be able to have this and for this issue to be able to take hold. Ignorance and then the people, and the, the, the Muslims to be able, some of them, some of the ummah to fall into shirk directly. Like shirk akbar, making dua to a grave, slaughtering for a grave. Being afraid of the person in the grave, afraid of him that he might hear him, afraid of him that, that if he did not uh, do something, they would swear. If he swore by the wali, he would do it for sure. He would be afraid that if he didn't do it, the wali would take revenge on him or harm him or cause some harm to come to him like this. They have these beliefs. Even to, until this day, 
There are people who have these beliefs in the graves and in the people in the graves and in the dead and, and what they call the wali or the awliya. And, and the life like this. This is because, because what? Because of ignorance. The widespread of ignorance. So at this time, what does Shaytan do? He's mentioning. Whenever what happened to the ummah or the majority of the ummah happened, and this widespread ignorance like this, he said, Shaytan portrayed sincerity, ikhlas, to the people in the, in the form of finding fault with the righteous people. So it would be like the one who tells, no, you have to have sincerity. You can't call on the grave. You can't slaughter for the grave. You can't uh, swear by the grave like this. Oh, you don't respect the righteous people. You have no love for the righteous people. You don't respect the awliya of Allah. Don't you know he was a righteous man? Allah loved him. He was pious. So Shaytan turned the things around on them like this. They were not able to see clearly. They were not able to see clearly. Oh, he was righteous man. He was a righteous man. You, you, were, uh, you and I were sinners. We have much sins. We have to go through them. I'm not worshiping them. I'm just taking them as an intercessor. They're closer to Allah than I am. They're, they're more beloved to Allah like this. Shaytan, he made, uh, he made this shirk appear to them in this manner. Like righteous, like honoring them and respecting them and loving them. He, he, he decorated the falsehood like this. This is what occurred. And then he said here, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, likewise, and the ones... Who, and he made it, and if you didn't do that, like you didn't honor the, the, the grave, you didn't slaughter for the grave, you didn't swear by the grave, you didn't go and, and cry and, and beg for intercession from the one in the grave. Oh, he doesn't have respect for the awliya. He doesn't know that he doesn't know the rights of the righteous people. He doesn't know the rights of this man. He was so pious and righteous. And they would say that he's finding fault with them. And the likes like this. So this is the means that Shaytan, he was able to introduce shirk into the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this particular issue, this issue is with regards to al-ghulub fi sariheen uh, The same Imam as Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he has a chapter in Kitab al-Tawheed, inshallah, that we'll be studying on Yom al-Sabt, after Fajr. So he will discuss in more detail with regards to this issue. The issue uh, with regards to the ghulub and the sariheen, he has a whole chapter with regards to this. In Kitab al-Tawheed, inshallah, we will take a bit of a more detailed discussion at that time, inshallah. So we see that this is the case. Ikhlas is the foundation of the deen. And being and, it, and it's clarified in the Qur'an in every verse. And this is clear from many different aspects. Likewise, the clarification of shirk in every verse. And likewise, in the sunnah of the Prophet. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cut off every door for shirk. Somebody said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Masha Allah wa shitta. He said, Aja'altani lillahi nidda. Ghaliba Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Qu'ibal qul Masha Allah wahda. He said, Somebody said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, uh, Whatever Allah wills, and what you will. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became angry. He said, uh, He said, Have you made me a peer or a partner in worship with Allah? And he's sharing, sharing that I have some share in the will. With Allah he said, rather say whatever Allah wills alone. Whatever Allah wills alone. And the Prophet wasallam, many, many narrations whenever, just the means that would lead to major shirk. The Prophet wasallam, he closed the door. Man kana harifan billahi aw liyaskut aw liyasmut. Whoever is going to swear, then let him swear by Allah or be silent. The Prophet wasallam, he, in many narrations, he's cutting off every aspect and every door that would lead to shirk, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the Sunnah, in the Quran, we find that this is clarified. But whenever ignorance is widespread, and whenever an individual he is ignorant over the reality of something, especially ikhlas, a tawheed, and especially shirk, then he is more likely to fall into it and not even know, and he is more likely to be affected by the trials, and maybe he does not even know. Because of what? Because of ignorance of the Qur'an, because of ignorance of the Sunnah, because of ignorance of the way of the Salaf, truly. Truly, what they were upon. Truly, the Qawa'i that they were really upon. And that we see that's been transmitted in their works and in their books and in their narrations. The way that they were upon. The one that is ignorant with this, then he can be affected by the fitin. And he can be affected by the trials. And he can even be convinced that the falsehood is truth. And he can even blame the people of truth and find fault with them and speak ill about them. And he doesn't want to do that, but because of his ignorance and because of, of, of this deficiency in knowledge and in light, uh, it has become so dark for him that he thinks the good is the bad and the bad is the good. 
And if you couple along with his sins, and you, if you couple along with this a bad intention, it becomes even worse. It becomes even worse. So the reality is that ignor- ignorance is a dangerous issue. And whenever ignorance is widespread, shaitan, he can, do, he can uh, take control and command with his plots. And likewise, the people of innovation, and likewise, the people of desire, and likewise, the people of disbelief, they have a great effect on the people of ignorance. On a person of ignorance, he can be easily duped. And they can pull the will over his eyes, like they say, in this manner. So it's an indication, likewise, of the importance of learning. The importance of learning. Learning the religion of Al-Islam, learning the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, learning the deen uh, with evidences, learning the way of the salaf properly, step by step, little by little, until one has a firm foundation and he understands the reality. Then he's standing on something, he's standing on a, a solid foundation. Inshallah, he will have benefit in khayr. So the author now, he continues and he says, Al-Aslu al-Thani, Al-Aslu al-Thani. أمر الله بالاجتماع في الدين ونهى عن التفرق فيه فبين الله هذا بيانا شافيا تفهمه العوام ونهانا أن نكون كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا قبرنا فهلكوا وذكر أنه أمر المسلمين بالاجتماع في الدين ونهاهم عن التفرق فيه ويزيده وضوحا ما وردت به السنة من العجب العجاب في ذلك ثم صار الأمر إلى أن الافتراق في أصول الدين وفروعه هو العلم والفقه في الدين وصار الأمر بالاجتماع في الدين لا يقوله إلا زنديق أو مجنون He mentioned رحمه الله تعالى He says the, the second principle Excuse me, the second foundation The second principle Allah has commanded for unification in the religion And prohibited division Allah has clarified this entirely so the layman may understand. He prohibited them from being like those who divided and differed before us and were destroyed. He mentioned that he has commanded the Muslims with unification in the religion and prohibited them from division. Additional clarity as well has come from the sunnah, from the amazing affairs relating to this. Then the affair, this issue, became so that the division in the fundamentals of the religion and its subsidiary issues, this is considered knowledge and understanding of the religion. And the command for unity in the religion, no one would say this except a heretic or an insane person. Someone who is crazy. This is the issue. So the reality of the second principle, it is, the principle is al-ijtima. Al-amru bil-ijtima. Wal-nahyu an tafarruq wal-ikhtilaf. Al-ijtima fi al-deen. Al-ijtima في الدين والله عز وجل أيضا أمر بالاجتماع في الدنيا فالاجتماع يكون في أمرين الدين أولا والدنيا unification the second principle is about unification being unified being in one body one group unified in the religion الاجتماع unification in the religion the unification that we're commanded with is too the unification in the religion and likewise we're commanded to be unified in the dunya that's going to be clarified inshallah in the third principle الأمر بس بالسمع والطاعة لولي الأمر اجتماع في الدنيا ها اجتماع unification upon the leader unification in the society under one leader that's going to come in the third principle here in this principle here he's speaking about unification in the deen unification in the deen الاجتماع في الدين unification in the religion my noble brothers له طريق it has a way there's a way to be unified in the deen. It's not left for us to decide how it's going to be unified or how we're going to be unified or how the Muslims can be unified. And the unification is not going to occur likewise from the unification of the bodies, get everybody in the same room. Rather, it's the unification of the hearts upon the proper creed and the unification of the understanding upon the proper methodology and manhaj upon the way of the Sahaba. This is the true unification that is required. Unification, it has, it has a means, it has a way. The way, طريق الاجتماع في الدين هو السراط المستقيم. السراط المستقيم. The way to be unified in the religion is to be upon the straight path. اهدينا السراط المستقيم. Guide us to the straight path. To be the way to be united in the religion is only one way. To be upon the straight path. 
to be upon the straight path. This path, it has a sign. How can we know who's really on the straight path? There's a sign that indicates those who are on the straight path. So the unification will only occur upon the straight path. Allah, Allah's straight path. And there's a sign that we can know who is on the straight path and who is not. And this sign, this alama, it is ittiba' al munami alayhim. To follow those whom Allah has bestowed His grace upon. To, to, to follow those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put His blessings and favors upon. Who are they? Al Nabiyun, wa Siddiqun, wa Shuhada, wa Salihun. These are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed His grace upon. So the one who is upon their way, in his creed, in his belief, the one who is upon their way with regards to their acts of worship, the one who is upon their way with regards to the way, their manners and their methodology, that they deal with the people, that they deal with the Muslims, that they deal with the deviant Muslims, that they deal with the non-Muslims, that they deal with their parents and their family, that they, they deal with transaction and likewise entirety of the whole deen, they're following them. And Nabiyin, wa Siddiqin, wa Shuhada, wa Salihin, then these are the ones that are on the straight path. And this is the sign that one is on the straight path. It's not a claim. It's not a claim. Everybody, it's easy to claim, well, I want to be, I'm on the straight path. But what is the sign that someone is on the straight path? That he's following the prophets. At the head of the prophets, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That he's following the Siddiqeen. The head of the Siddiqeen, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu anhu. That he's following the Shuhada. The head of the Shuhada. Hmm. Hamza. Also, from the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Umar, Uthman. <laughs> so then who, who do we have to follow then? What is the sign somebody is on the straight path? That they're on the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. That they're on the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions. Was salihin. Who are the salihin? Uh, all of the righteous people. After them, particularly from the companions and then from the students of the companions and the students of the companions. The ones that the text have come, that Allah is pleased with them and pleased with their way. So then, al ishtima fi din yukunu al ishtima ala sirat al mustaqim. Wa sirat al mustaqim huwa ma kana alayhi nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashabuhu. So, radi Allahu anhu. This is the true unification in the religion. There's no unification except in this way. There's no unification except in this way. What is the call of the uh, of these people? What is the call uh, uh, of uh, of the uh, the mun'am alayhim? What is their da'wah? Their da'wah is to the straight path. And their da'wah is to hold fast to the straight path. And their da'wah is to leave off everything that is in conflict with the straight path or in opposition to the straight path. Come be with us upon the straight path. Come be united upon the straight path. It's an obligation. Even Allah Azza wa Jalla, He mentioned this in many, many verses in the Quran. The obligation to follow them. The obligation to follow their way in the straight path is the path that they were upon. al ijtima fi din Naam? To be united and to not be divided. What is the way to be united? To be upon the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and to be upon the way of the companions. And to be upon the way of those who follow them exactly until this day. This is the unification. And any other unification, it is a claim. And there's no proof behind that. And rather, it is division. Rather, it is division. Their call was the call to the straight path. The Prophet wasallam, he called to the straight path. The Prophet wasallam, he drew a line one day for his companions like this. خطى لنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خطى في حديث ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه. The Prophet drew a line for us like this, straight line, سراط المستقيم. And then he drew on the right that lines like this. ثم خطى عن يمينه خطوطا وعن شماله خطوطا. ثم ثم تلا كلا كلام الله عز وجل وأن هذا سراط مستقيم فتبعوه ولا تتبعوا السبل فتفرق بكم عن سبيلي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he drew the straight line. He put the lines on the left and on the right like this, and then he said. This is my straight path. Follow it and do not follow the other paths or they will take you away from my straight path. The path is only one. This is the, this is the straight path. The path of the Prophet wasallam is the straight path. The path that him and his companions were upon. And, and, and many, many narrations is indicating this. Many, many narrations is indicating this. The obligation of being upon this straight path. This is the, what the Prophet wasallam he called to. And this is what his companions they called to. From the very beginning of the Qur'an, likewise, is the obligation of following the companions of the Prophet 
And we can see this. Uh, this is the ijtima, and this is where many people they claim, you know, we must be united. There's many calls of ijtima. There's many claims, and jama'a, al jama'a, al sunnah wal jama'a. Even there's people, and there's Sufis. And they claim Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Then there's other people that they're, 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 they're completely deviant, but and they claim Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. And they, and they have the deviation in these usul. Maybe you'll find some of them have some tawheed, but when you come to this ijtima', they're, they're not upon this ijtima'. Or they claim to be upon the ijtima', but then if it comes to the issue of the next principle with the rulers, you find that they're not obeying the rulers. So in reality, these principles here is the clarification of how a Muslim will live his life. And there's no way in reality for the first fundamental to be actualized in, in reality and to be applied properly except with ijtima. Because whenever there is ijtima and there's unification, and whenever the people are united, and then they are able to have harmony and they are able to have peace and the, and the masajid can be ma'mura and they can be established and the people can worship Allah alone and the deen can spread because of the unification and the love that is between the, the, the believers and the likes like this. Whenever the division comes, on the other hand, the, the, the ikhlas becomes weak and the deen becomes weak and shaitan is able to, to take over and the enemies are, are able to take over. And this is the old trick. This is nothing new. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Divide them. Divide the Muslims. That's one great intent from shaitan and the enemies of Islam. And to divide the people of the sunnah is even greater for them. An intent to divide the people of the sunnah. Now, so the, or, the, or, the order to be united, this is a fundamental principle. And this is a means to actualize that ikhlas. And this is a means that will aid the ikhlas to be established in the land. And for the ikhlas and the tawheed to be established in the heart of the believers, in the hearts of the believers, because of their unification upon this tawheed. And because of the unification. And the thing that, the, the sign that they are united is that they are upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the way of the companions, and the way of the companions. So, from the very beginning of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala He is mentioning the abrogation. Every single prayer, a Muslim is is making supplication, and an abrogation for every Muslim to recite that is of the proper age and same seventeen times a day, bare minimum, to ask to be upon the straight path. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. This is the way to unification. So in reality, we're asking to be unified. We're asking for unification, to be upon the way of unification. If somebody were to say, okay, what is the reality of the Sirat al Mustaqim? What is it? Allah After that, he, he clarifies. Sirat al anamta alayhim. It's the path of those who you have bestowed your blessings upon. And then if someone were to say, again, who is that? Who are they? And then, huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He clarified this in His book. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned in Surah An-Nisa, an amazing verse, clarifying this. Who are? Aladina an'am Allahu alayhim. Men whom? Aladina an'am Allahu alayhim. Who are they? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ These are the ones that will be in the company of those whom Allah has bestowed His blessings upon. مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّابِهِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And how great a company they are. So here in the Fatiha, we're asking to be upon the straight path and we're asking to be on the, upon the way of those who Allah has bestowed His blessings upon and they are the Prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous. And the leader of the Prophets is our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the leader of the martyrs are the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Except the, uh, uh, the, the Siddiq is Abu Bakr and then the Shuhada is the rest of the Khulafa like this. In this manner. And then the other of the companions likewise, Hamza, Sayyidu Shuhada, was Sumayya the first, Radiallahu Anha, or Radiallahu Anhum Jamiyan, the first Shaheed in Islam. So this is the case we're asking to be upon their way. This is an indication of the obligation of following the companions of the Prophet. Likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal, He mentioned, He said, If they believe, meaning the people of the time of the Prophet, if they believe in the likes of what you believe in, you and your companions, then they will be have guided. Then they will be guided. Then they will be guided. There are many verses in the Quran with the obligation of following the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. To be united is is to be united upon the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the understanding of his companions. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has praised the companions greatly in the Qur'an, mentioning the obligation that no one can have the pleasure of Allah except by following their way. The rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah. Allah is pleased with an individual cannot occur except by following them, following their way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions the sabiqoon al-awwaluna min al-muhajirina wal-ansar wal-ladhina attaba'uhum bi-ihsan. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ نعم السابقون الأولون the first and foremost من المهاجرين والأنصار from the مهاجرين those who migrated from Mecca to Medina from the believers والأنصار those who aided and supported the Prophet and the مهاجرين صلى الله عليه وسلم whenever they migrated from they're from Medina right and then what did he say والذين تبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه الله عز وجل he mentioned three groups in this noble verse Three groups of people, these are the people that have the, that have the pleasure of Allah. There's no, the fourth group, there's no fourth group. The fourth group is finished. The one who wants to obtain the pleasure of Allah, he has to be from one of these three groups. Can he be from, can we be from the Muhajirun? No, they already passed. Can we be from the Ansar? Ah, not possible, not possible. They already passed. What's left? The only other option. وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ Those who follow them. بِإِحْسَانِ أي بِالْإِتْقَانِ وَبِالْسِدْقِ And in reality, properly. They follow them perfectly. Not in how much, but in the manner. We can't follow the companions in how much they worship Allah and how much the, 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 the deeds that they have, but in the manner that they worship Allah in the manner that they believed in Allah in the manner that they applied their religion. Now, so if we see this verse, it indicates the virtue of the companions first. We see, how is that? The three groups of people that Allah is pleased with, two-thirds of them, are the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Two-thirds of those رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. Two-thirds of those who have obtained the pleasure of Allah or will obtain the pleasure of Allah they're the companions of the Prophet There's only one-third left. If you have a pie like this, you cut it in two-thirds, all is for the companions, the pleasure of Allah. The only opportunity, only opportunity anybody has left after them is to be from that last third. And they are those who follow the companion. They are those who follow them. So... Not only are they two-thirds of those who earn the pleasure of Allah, but no one will gain the pleasure of Allah except by following them. Because of this, we see at Imam Ahmed, we know the status of Imam Ahmed. Rahim Allah Ta'ala, he lived in the, he died in the year 241. He has a great book called Usul al-Sunnah. He began this work. He said, Usul al-Sunnah indana. The fundamentals of the Sunnah with us, التمسك بما كان عليه أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والاقتداء بهم الله أكبر هو إمام أحمد رحمه الله إمام أهل السنة nobody would would doubt in his knowledge and in his understanding of the fundamentals of the deen and of the subsidiary issues of the, of the deen entirely he's a great scholar from the greatest of the ulama of the salaf in hadith and in fiqh we all know what are the fundamental the fundamentals of this deen. Where is it derived from? Al Quran, was Sunnah, and the understanding of the Sahaba, huh? Like this, the Quran and the Sunnah. Then we have Ijma, which is from the Sahaba, and then we have Qiyas Sahih, right? So this is the case. This is the means. This is the sources of of the religion of Islam. Al Quran was Sunnah, but Imam uh, Imam. Uh, Ahmed rahimahullah, he didn't begin at the foundations of the sunnah. The foundation of the deen with us is the Qur'an and the sunnah. And he said the foundations of the sunnah with us, At-tamassuku bima kana alayhi ashabu nabi. To hold fast to what the companions of the Prophet were upon, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wal-iqtida'u bihim. And to take them as role models. Why is that? Is he just throwing the first two principles out? The Quran and Sunnah don't follow that, but just follow that because they're the ones who follow the Quran and the Sunnah. The ones who follow the Quran truthfully and in reality, the ones who follow the Sunnah truthfully and in reality, they're the companions of the Prophet. The ones who are upon Tawheed and Sunnah, they're the companions of the Prophet. In reality, this Quran and this Sunnah it came to us by way of them. 
They witnessed its revelation and they transmitted it to the people. So they're the ones that were upon the true understanding of this deen. They're the ones who witnessed the revelation. They're the ones who learned from the Prophet ﷺ the understanding of the book. They're the ones who learned the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ directly. So then to understand the way they understood is a must and is an obligation. So yes, of course, the fundamentals of the deen are the Qur'an and the sunnah. No doubt about that. But how do you understand them? You have to hold fast to what the companions were upon. You have to take the companions عنهم, as an example. This is the understanding of this great imam. Al Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that he began in this manner. The true Sunnah, the true deed is to follow the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and to take them as an example. And this is the means to be upon Ishtima. This is the means to be upon unification. There's no other way to unification except in the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. Even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he warned us in many narrations. He warned us of the division that would occur. The Prophet Sallallahu he warned us of the differing that will occur and that the division that will occur. And he mentioned that the obligation, the way out from that is to hold, has to hold fast to his sunnah and the sunnah of his companions. The Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned in the hadith Irbal al-Sari radiyallahu anhu مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسِيَا اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَسِيَا اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا that whoever lives after me, then he's going to see much differing. But he's not just informing us, وسلم, so we can know. This is not just information. Whoever lives after me, he's going to see a lot of, a lot of differing. The Prophet وسلم, he mentioned the way out after that. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ تَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا وَعْضُوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِهِ he said, hold fast. So you have to hold fast to my sunnah and the sunnah of my rightly guided khulafa. Hold fast to it and bite onto it with your motor teeth. This is likewise an indication. It would have been easy for him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow, hold fast to my sunnah. Hold fast to my sunnah. No, he said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّشِدِينَ He said, تَمَسَّكُوا بِهَا He didn't say, تَمَسَّكُوا بِهِمَا Like they're two different sunnahs. He didn't say, hold fast to both of them. وَعَضُوا عَلَيْهِمَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ He didn't say that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hold fast to both of them. You must hold fast to my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa rashidin And when he referred to them, he referred to them in a singular form because it's one sunnah. It's not a different sunnah. It's not a different sunnah. So to hold fast to the way of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu is to hold fast to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To hold fast to the way of Umar radiallahu anhu is to hold fast to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To the extent that there's a great tabi, his name is uh, Abu Arya. Rahimahullah, he died in like 94 or 95, 93 or 94 or 95, in this area right here before 100 years after the, after the, uh, the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was asked about the straight path. What is the straight path? Abu Abu Ali rahimahullah, what did he say? He said, "As-Sirat al-Mustaqim, huwa Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa sahibahu min badhi, wa sahibahu min badhi." He said, "The straight path. What is the straight path?" He said, "It is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his two companions after him, Abu Bakr wa Umar." And this is the straight path. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar. This is his understanding of the straight path. This is his understanding of the straight path. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar Radiallahu Anhuma, like this. There are other narrations likewise, authentic. For example, Anas ibn Malik Radiallahu Anhu, he is asked about saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the beginning of the Fatiha. What did he say? Anas ibn Malik. From the beginning, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came to Medina, he was a servant with him, living with him and serving him. Well, inshallah, after the adhan, we'll continue. And as Ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, he, he, he was asked about reciting al-Basmalah in the beginning of the Fatiha in Salat. Do you say, whenever you begin Salat, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim aloud, or do you begin with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen? In this manner, this question was, was given to... Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. And from this narration, we see the understanding. This is a companion who lived with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The day he came to Medina sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas' mother, he, she gave him as a servant. 
take him as a servant so that the, so that he can learn from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam benefit the prophet like and likewise benefit from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam very smart mother radiyallahu anha sulaim so the case is he lived with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam beside the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam doing chores for the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam praying with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam traveling with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's very aware of the sunnah radiyallahu anhu anas ibn malik he's asked about this issue what did he say? He said, "Sallaytu khalfa al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa Abi Bakr wa Umar wa kulluhum yastaftihuna bilhamdulillahi rabbil alamin." This is his understanding, the understanding of Anas ibn Malik. Whenever he's asked about this, he said, "I prayed behind the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and I prayed behind Abu Bakr, and I prayed behind Umar radhiyallahu anhuma, and both and all of them, they begin with alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin." So, but not looking at the fifth issue. The point is not to look at the fifth issue here. The point is to look at the understanding of this the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. It would have sufficed him, sah, to say that I, I pray behind the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. He recite like this. But he wants to teach. He's a teacher. Educate, when he, whenever he's giving the fatwa, he is clarifying the reality. I, I pray behind the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr. And Umar, radiyallahu anhum, all of them, they began like this. And this is his evidence for his statement and his belief and for his fatwa. Like this in his answer for this person. So we see the understanding of the companions is the understanding of the companions. Allahu Akbar. And this companion, his understanding is the understanding of the companions. So this is not a new idea. Brother, this is ijtima fi deen. This is the second principle. The author is mentioning this is the, a, a great principle and that first principle cannot be realized and actualized and applied except by being unified. And whenever the people are truly upon Tawheed rightfully, then they will be unified. They will be unified. At Tawheed, if it enters a person's heart, it would remove everything. Ikhlas, it would remove all of the falsehood. It would, it, it, it would uh, destroy all of the darkness and the light would come and he would see the true tawheed that is required and requested from Allah that is demanded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his obligation and his right. At tawheed, aladhi huwa haqqullahi ala al-abid. This right of Allah whenever it enters the heart, all darkness goes away. All ignorance goes away. Knowing who Allah is by his names and his attributes, knowing his right, Hoping and desiring in Him, putting a trust and reliance in Him, fearing Him, tabaraka wa ta'ala, and striving to please Him. When the people are united upon this, by following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the ways of the companions, this is whenever the, the ummah will rise again. And this is the means for success. And this is the means for, for Savior. And this is the straight path. That's why we repeat again, the uh, al-ishtima fi din this is the second principle. There's a way. There's a way to be united. Unification in the religion is the second fundamental principle of these six principles. There's a way. What way is that? Sirat al Mustaqim. The only way to be united is to be upon the Sirat al Mustaqim. There's a sign to tell who's on the Sirat al Mustaqim or not. There's a sign to know who is on the straight path. What is that sign? Following. I was following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his companions. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions they had a call, propagation and da'wah. What did they call to? They called to the straight path and they warned from being deviated from the straight path. They called to the straight path and they warned from being deviated from the straight path. Five. This straight path it has a masdar, it has a source where it comes from. What is it? Quran and the Sunnah. Like there's a resource that's referred back to anytime there is any division and uh, how to understand this or differing. Uh, the, these Quran and Sunnah it has, it has to have a reference point. Because he says Quran Sunnah, I say Quran Sunnah, they say Quran Sunnah, people they hold hands, who, 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 Quran Sunnah. This one gonna go put a belt and blow up the masjid, Quran Sunnah. Huh? What is this? How do we, what's the marjir for the reality? The understanding of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Those who follow them will continue tomorrow, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu